I'm Dr. Tan Yi Kai. I'm Dr. Lorenzi Villalba. I'm Dr. Chang Yong Kim. And this is the Myth, Myth vs. Fact. Defense Thrombosis Edition. Yes, deep vein thrombosis is a common medical problem. The annual incidence of deep vein thrombosis ranges from 1 in 1,000 to 3 in 1,000 in normal populations. In USA alone, there are about 900,000 of new cases a year. Deep vein thrombosis refer to abnormal clottings of blood, which occur most commonly in the deep veins of the legs, resulting in blockage of blood flow in the veins. The most fear complication of deep vein thrombosis is pulmonary embolism, whereby part of the blood clot breaks off and travels to the lungs, blocking the arteries in the lung and preventing oxygen delivery to the rest of the body. Pulmonary embolism is a life-threatening condition which can lead to sudden death of an individual. Now, this is a myth. Approximately 50% of people with a deep vein thrombosis experience no symptom at all. For people who have symptoms, the most common signs are swellings, skin that is warm, and pain or tenderness, and red or discolored skin. Yes, women have an increased risk of venous thrombosis. That is due to several factors. Most of them have to do with hormonal uh, influences. Women that take contraceptive pills, women that are pregnant or have delivered a baby are at much higher risk of developing deep venous thrombosis. Certain risks are very well known, like, like a genetic predisposition. We call that a thrombophilia, where people have an increased risk of clots due to some abnormalities in their blood, but also, um, environmental things like prolonged periods of immobilization, patients that are undergoing treatment in hospital, have big surgeries or long haul trouble are at increased risk of having deep venous thrombosis. Also smoking and having varicose veins have been proven to be significant risk factors for deep venous thrombosis. Yes, there's a good deal of evidence to show that birth control pills are associated with the risk of deep vein thrombosis. This is because the use of birth control pills can lead to changes in the level of the clotting factor in the blood, making the blood more likely to clot. In addition, the risk of blood clot is very dependent on the dose of estrogen in the birth control pills. Basically, the higher the dose of estrogen, the higher the risk of deep vein thrombosis. Therefore, the current birth control pills in the market have lower dose of estrogen. Birth control pills should be contraindicated in women with history of genetic clotting defect as the risk of deep vein thrombosis is going to be much higher. For example, women with factor V laden genetic mutation who are taking birth control pills are at risk of deep vein thrombosis by at least 35 folds. Counseling on deep vein thrombosis risk is therefore crucial for women who wish to be on birth control pills. It's generally advisable to stop birth control pills within one month of major surgery to decrease the risk of blood clot. Yes, new research show that obesity make a men and women more likely to develop deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. The odds were more than five times higher for obese patients younger than 40 as compared to their uh, non-obese peers. It is also reported in the American Journal of Medicine that the risk is highest for obese women who are younger than 40 years old. Cancer is also a risk factor for deep venous thrombosis and it has to do with the cancer itself and also with the treatment. Patients that are undergoing chemotherapy, for example, are at an increased risk of developing deep venous thrombosis. Now, interestingly, deep venous thrombosis is more common than some of the most common cancers that we normally deal with. 
is more common than prostate cancer, is more common than breast cancer, is actually more common than both of them together. Yes, there's a strong correlation between varicose vein disease and deep vein thrombosis. A recent study has shown that people with varicose veins are five times more likely to develop deep vein thrombosis. The risk goes even higher if there's associated history of superficial thrombofibritis, basically referring to thrombosis of varicose veins. The increase in the level of inflammatory and clotting factors in the blood in people with varicose veins are thought to facilitate the clot formation in the deep veins. No. According to published data from these studies, Drinking uh, one or four cups of coffee a day can raise your chance of a deep vein thrombosis by 11%. But interestingly, if you drink more than five cups of a day, it can help to lower your risk of uh, getting deep vein thrombosis by 25%. The biological mechanisms underlying these relationships can be hardly uncertain Yes, sitting still for extended period in a cramped space with little leg room may lead to deep vein thrombosis. It's known that air travel of more than 4 hours is associated with clot formation in the deep veins. The risk of deep vein thrombosis will increase further if you have other risk factors such as obesity, varicose veins, on hormonal therapy and history of cancer. So, for people who are on long haul flight, it's advisable to move around as much as possible during the flight journey, ensure adequate hydration and wear anti-thrombotic compression stockings. Sometimes clots can dissolve on their own and leave no consequences. But if the clot is big enough, it can compromise the leg and leave the patient with residual symptoms and disability. That's what we call post-thrombotic syndrome. Or it can break in the acute phase, lodge into the lungs, and it can potentially be deadly. In cases of significant symptoms, it's a good idea to seek medical attention because there are a lot of new techniques, a lot of new potential options for treatment to help these patients. It is important to note that deep vein thrombosis can develop silently and even if the symptoms are mild, they can progress and eventually become a serious problem. Talk to your doctor today and evaluate your risk. <laughs>